Now you stay out of this, Donovan. He's been hiding behind your gun long enough. You got a choice, dishwasher. Either you get out of town, or tonight you'll be out in that street. Ten Westerns of 1962. Shh. After making a video on Ten Westerns of 1967, today I randomly landed on 1962, a year that was a mixed bag of Westerns, some very well known and loved, others less known and a bit sketchy. Let's take a look and have fun today. I'll do my best with pronunciation of names. If you like this video, check out my many other videos on my channel. The link is in the description. Like, share and subscribe. You know the drill. Here we go. Geronimo. Geronimo is a western made by Levi Gardiner Lavin, starring Chuck Connors in the title role. Directed by Arnold Levin. Filming took place in Sierra de Organos National Park in the town of Sombrerita, Mexico. The casting of the tall, blonde, blue-eyed Chuck Connors as a Native American Indian is widely criticized, even when the film was made in 1961. The following year, Connors married his co-star, Kamala Devi. Chuck Connors tried wearing brown contact lenses, but said they hurt his eyes. It took two hours each day to apply his wig and makeup, so he would resemble a Native American Indian. Instead of surrender. That's when they'll begin to understand. Dealer. Let me feel him kick. How the West Was Won, an epic western directed by Henry Hathaway, who directed three out of the five chapters involving the same family. John Ford and George Marshall, produced by Bernard Smith, written by James R. Webb, and narrated by Spencer Tracy. Originally filmed in true three-lens cinerama, with the according three-panel panorama projected onto an enormous curved screen. The film has an ensemble cast with many cinema icons and newcomers including Carol Baker, Lee J. Cobb, Henry Fonda, Caroline Jones, Carl Malden, Gregory Peck, George Pappard, Robert Preston, Debbie Reynolds, James Stewart, Eli Wallach, John Wayne and Richard Whitmark. The supporting cast features Bridget Buslin, Walter Brennan, David Bryan, Andy Devine, Raymond Massey, Agnes Moorhead, Henry Harry Morgan. Thelma Ritter, Mickey Shaughnessy, and Russ Tamblin. How the West Was Won is widely considered one of Hollywood's greatest epics. The film received widespread critical acclaim and was a box office success, grossing $50 million on a budget of $15 million. At the 36th Academy Award, it earned eight nominations, including Best Picture and won three for Best Story and Screenplay, written directly for the screen, Best Sound, and Best Film Editing. In 1997, it was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. During filming in June 1961, Carl Malden had to be rushed to hospital to have an emergency appendectomy. King, portrayed by Richard Widmark. the West was won startles your eyes with a huge and colorful panorama of the glorious frontier, with all its reckless adventure and its awesome violence. With its spirited romance, 
its lusty Old West fun, and its breathtaking action spectacle. The most fabulous film ever conceived from any standpoint. Lonely Are the Brave, a black and white western adaptation of the Edward Abbey novel The Brave Cowboy, directed by David Miller, from a screenplay by Dalton Trumbo, and starring Kirk Douglas, Gina Rollins, George Kennedy, and Walter Matthau. Kirk Douglas plays cowboy Jack Burns. Gina Rollins portrays his best friend's wife, and Walter Matthau appears as a sheriff who sympathizes with Burns, but must do his job and chase him down. The picture also features an early score by composer Jerry Goldsmith. Douglas repeatedly said that this was his favorite film of his own work. The one-armed man, Bill Race, tells John W. Jack Burns, Kirk Douglas, in the bar, that he lost his arm in Okinawa during World War II. Race lost his right arm in a fire on board a ship during that conflict. He was Burt Lancaster's stand-in, and later landed a recurring role as the real killer of Dr. Richard Kimball's wife on The Fugitive, 1963. The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, a western directed by John Ford, starring John Wayne and James Stewart. The screenplay by James Warner Bella and Willis Goldbeck was adapted from a 1953 short story written by Dorothy M. Johnson. The supporting cast features Vera Miles, Lee Marvin, Edmund O'Brien, Andy Devine, John Carradine, Woody Strode, Strother Martin, and Lee Van Cleef. That's my stake, Valance. Well, you heard him, dude. Pick it up. I said you, Liberty. You pick it up. And the man who shot him was justifiably destined to In 2007, the film was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. John Wayne suggested Lee Marvin for the role of Valance after working with him in the Comancheros, 1961. So you had a gun in his hand, didn't you? I didn't say that. That ain't murder, Mr. Marshall. That's a clean-cut case of self-defense. Now get out of my way. This time, right between the eyes. Ride the High Country, a western directed by Sam Peckingpah, Ride the High Country. starring Randolph Scott, Joel McRae, and Marriott Hartley. The supporting cast includes Edgar Buchanan, James Drury, Warren Oates, and Ron Starr. The film features Scott's final screen performance. After this film, Joel McRae did not make another feature film until 1970. That year saw him make Cry Blood Apache with his son Jody. He appeared in The Young Rounders in 1972. His final film appearance was in 1976 in Mustang Country. Final film of Randolph Scott. He retired from acting once he saw the finished film, saying he wanted to quit while he was ahead and that he would never be able to better his work here. Marriott Hartley, refreshingly different with her red hair and freckles, recklessly pitted one suitor against another. Looks like the girl he's been going down the mountain to see. I'll say one thing, she's sure worth the trip. Looks like a warm one. Tenderfoot, who'd rather fight than love. <laughs> Go get him, Tiger. You're doing fine. Especially the two tall men who suited their actions to the era in which they lived. Six Black Horses, a western directed by Harry Keller, starring Audie Murphy, Dan Duryea, and Joan O'Brien. Ben Lane, Audie Murphy, is breaking a horse in the desert that he believes to be astray. He is caught by some ranchers who treat him as a horse thief when he is saved by Frank Jesse, Dan Duryea. Lane and Jesse are hired by Kelly, Joan O'Brien, who offers to pay them $1,000 each to take her to a town to be with her husband. In reality, she is setting up Jesse because he killed her husband in a shootout. A unique part of the film is that Lane rescues a collie dog that goes with him everywhere, including riding the pack horse. Audie Murphy and Dan Duryea both appear in two earlier films, 
Ride Clear of Diablo 1954 and Night Passage 1957. Treasure of Silver Lake, a western directed by Harold Renal, starring American actor Lex Barker as the frontiersman Old Shatterhand and French actor Pierre Bryce as the Apache warrior Winner II, filmed in Croatia, then part of Yugoslavia. The film was released in West Germany on 14 December 1962. It was the highest grossing German language film of that year. Its success demonstrated the viability of European-produced Western films, laying the groundwork for the Spaghetti Western. The first Western film produced by West Germany. Horst Klutschultz, Carlos Thompson, Christopher Lee and Guy Williams were considered for the part of Winner 2. find the treasure of Silver Lake. Chief of the Apaches, who becomes Brinkley's helpless hostage. Shootout at Big Sag, a western, starred Walter Brennan and was made for Brennan's production company. The film was produced by Brennan's son Andy and based on a story by Walter Coburn. It was meant to be a television pilot called You're Barbed dead, Wire and would have starred Leif Erikson as you Constance Ford, shot in 1960. The dragon. pilot was to be called Rawhide Halo. The pilot was eventually released as a film in Mexico, the film was titled Los Magnificos McCoy as a tie-in to Walter Brennan's American television series, The Real McCoys. By all. Where? You are rid of the old preacher now. Young Guns of Texas, a western directed by Maury Dexter and starring James Mitchum, Alan Ladd, and Jodie McRae. The supporting cast features Chill Wills, Gary Conway and Robert Lowry. Tyler Duane, Gary Conway, is expelled from West Point after the Civil War when his brother, a Union officer, is accused of stealing army funds. Barbara Mansell's character is Martha Jane Canary which is the real name of the Wild West legend, Calamity Jane. Why shouldn't Morgan dance with her? Because old man Glenn Denning doesn't like it. We're out of war in the morning. Zorro the Avenger, a Spanish adventure western, directed by Joaquin Luis Romero Marchand, starring Frank Lattimore, Maria Luz Galicia, Howard Vernon, Maria Anderson, and Ralph March. 
It was one of the hits of the time from the Western films. This film supposed a successor to the character of Coyote in films like La Justia del Coyote, 1955, edited into The Mark of Zorro, 1975, followed by Shades of Zorro, 1962. Uh, pardon me, with your permission. <laughs> Colonel, I heard the professor. Uh, remember, I am your friend. I know. Well, I've acquired all the essentials. Now I only like the beverages. Uh, why don't we select I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate likes, shares and subscribers. They help me a lot. Also hit the notification button to get my new videos. Bye for now. Interesting facts about famous people.